Hi everyone, this is the next in my series of educational videos about centronuclear myopathy. And here in this video, specifically focusing on the question of how common are the different centronuclear myopathies. And particularly, actually, I'm just going to focus in this video on X linked myotubular myopathy, which is the most common of the centronuclear myopathies. So uh, I make the point about distinguishing between the different types of centronuclear myopathies because uh, there's different genetic abnormalities causing different uh, abnormal or dysfunctional proteins that can cause centronuclear myopathy. Uh, and I've made a quick table here just to quickly review uh, different genes causing different problems with different proteins. Each of these that I've listed here uh, can cause centronuclear myopathy and still others are uh, unknown. But for this video, we're going to focus on the gene mutation within MTM1 gene, which causes a dysfunctional protein called myotubularin. And this causes X-linked myotubular myopathy. So again, why are we focusing on X-linked myotubular myopathy, or XLMTM, as it's sometimes abbreviated? Well, because this is the one that is uh, best studied. And the reason that it's best studied is that this is the most common of the centronuclear myopathies, at least so far. Now, it's always possible that you know, there'll be some, uh, some milder version of a centronuclear myopathy with uh, more genetic testing might show that you know, there's a prevalence in the population or something. But really, for right now, it certainly seems that uh, X-linked MTM is the most common of the centronuclear myopathies. It's also the one that, that has been known for the longest amount of time because it was the first gene mutation discovered uh, at, for causing centronuclear myopathy back in 1990. Uh, and usually, there's a relatively you know, dramatic or severe presentation at birth. And that's related to how we figure out how common something is because when there's this severe presentation right at birth, uh, there tends to be an aggressive diagnostic workup. Uh, and then we get more data on how common the condition is, where if it's something that's much milder and people might walk around and it never be so bad that they get uh, diagnostic testing or workup, uh, those numbers might be more likely to uh, fall off the radar, uh, unlike what we see in X-linked MTM, which unfortunately is quite severe. Uh, also, there's genetic testing commercially available. So if your doctor writes uh, orders for genetic testing for somebody whose muscle biopsy has shown centronuclear myopathy, the genetic testing has been available for many years for X-linked myotubular myopathy, uh, whereas it's just more recently uh, coming to market for uh, the other um, types of centronuclear myopathy. There are a few that certainly are available currently, and there's more that are forthcoming. Uh, but X-linked MTM has been around the longest in that regard. So before we talk about the uh, how common something is, we just have to distinguish whether we're talking about incidence or if we're talking about prevalence. And incidence means the new cases that are identified, so newly identified cases typically described as new cases over a given period of time, such as new cases per year. Although you could get a proportional incidence, which is would be things like new cases per given uh, you know, uh, live births or something like that, uh, which is often you know, how some of these things are reported for congenital myopathies. Um, prevalence, on the other hand, is the total number of current cases. So if you were to take a snapshot in time and say, OK, during this window in time, when I took a look to see who currently has this condition, that would be uh, a prevalence rather than an incidence. Um, one of the reasons why this is important is that uh, X-linked myotubular myopathy, uh, unfortunately, can be very fatal. Uh, there are many children who, uh, after being born with X-linked MTM, uh, never make it out of the hospital alive. Uh, there are others who live for decades. Uh, so there's a lot of variability there. But for those you know, who would show up as a new case uh, one year, uh, if they have passed away uh, you know, by the following year when you were doing a prevalence study, um, they would not show up because they're not, uh, if they were not alive at the time of the prevalence study. OK, so getting back to X-linked MTM and the incidence, or at least a proportional incidence, uh, here we have uh, an article by uh, Youngbluth and Walgren Peterson, Peterson and uh, Jocelyn Laporte uh, in 2008. And uh, in this uh, study, it was a review article, but one of the comments they, that was made was that 
uh, they felt that the incidence of X-linked myotubular myopathy had an incidence of about two cases per 100,000 male births. Uh, and this was from Jocelyn Laporte's uh, personal data uh, showing that in France, at least, uh, there was this uh, incidence of molecularly confirmed, meaning genetic testing done for MTM, uh, that was positive in two out of every 100,000 male births. Now, you know, we could convert that and say, well, that's, you know, one case out of every 50,000 male births, or if you wanted to look at it in terms of total births, uh, since boys and girls are relatively equally born, uh, that would be about one case out of every 100,000 total births if you included boys and girls. Of course, acknowledging that uh, girls are not going to be at risk for uh, developing full-blown uh, X-linked myotubular myopathy. So in general then, at least from the French data, uh, we're looking at uh, an, an instance or a proportional incidence of about one case of X-linked myotubular myopathy out of every 100,000 births. And let's compare that with a couple of other common, you know, or, or uh, more common, I guess you could say, um, you know, childhood uh, neurologic conditions like cerebral palsy happens in one case out of every 500 births. So cerebral palsy would be about 200 times more common than X-linked myotubular myopathy. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy happens about one case out of every 3,500 male uh, infants. Uh, so, you know, that would be one case out of every, you say, about 7,000 births total, if you were to include, again, boys and girls. Uh, so, you know, again, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy would be about 14 times more common than X-linked MTM. Down syndrome happens about one out of every 1,000 births, uh, which, again, would be about 100 times more common than MTM. Another way of saying that would be that for every one baby that you would see with X-linked myotubular myopathy, if you were uh, in a busy hospital uh, that was delivering uh, lots of infants, uh, for every one child that with X-linked myotubular myopathy, there would be 200 with cerebral palsy, and another 100 with Down syndrome, uh, and another 14 with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So that's one case out of every 100,000, which is uh, relatively rare. Um, but still, that is many babies per year when you think about how many babies uh, are born. Uh, in you know, that one case per 100,000 uh, comes out to about 10 cases per 1 million births. Uh, and in the United States, there's about 4 million births per year. Uh, and you know, that leaves us with about 40 new cases of X-linked MTM per year uh, just in the United States. Again, these are all you know, rough estimates, uh, and I've rounded off here and there. So really, um, if we move on then from the incidence and talk about the prevalence for X-linked MTM, well, prevalence, uh, now we're talking about how many people have this condition at a given point in time. Again, different than incident, incidence. And uh, the prevalence from one study uh, came out to be about one in a million children. Uh, so you know, this was from Southeastern Michigan. Uh, you know, this was uh, Dr. James Dowling's group uh, at uh, University of Michigan, and uh, they looked at a population of 1.2 million children living in Southeastern Michigan, uh, and they found an overall point prevalence for pediatric congenital myopathies in general uh, was about one case out of every 26,000 children. Um, but f only one case per million. Out of their 1.2 million children, uh, there was only one single case that the, in, uh, in their prevalence uh, study of X-linked myotubular myopathy. Um, there were some limitations, as there are with any study. This only looked at uh, MDA clinics, so for MTM children not being seen in an MDA clinic, they wouldn't have been counted. Uh, and if they weren't, uh, and again, this yeah, and was a prevalence study, so it only counts those who are alive uh, at the time that the actual study was uh, performed, of course. Uh, and here's just the reference on that from the Annals of Neurology, uh, that study. So how common are, you know, are the centronuclear myopathies overall? Well, we've said that for uh, X-linked uh, myotubular myopathy, uh, here we're talking about, you know, about one case out of every 100,000 births, or maybe one case perhaps in a million uh, as far as uh, prevalence. 
Uh, the other types of centronuclear myopathy, there's not great data. I may do another uh, video uh, specifically kind of breaking down and estimating some numbers for those, but these would be uh, typically felt to be less common than for X-linked myotubular myopathy. So, you know, then really, you know, that's my summary as far as, uh, as, far as the data available on incidence of X-linked myotubular myopathy. Uh, my recommendations in general, of course, are, as usual, you know, always, you know, do your best to get the genetic testing, discuss it with your doctor, discuss it with your genetic counselor, network and reach out and connect with other patients, families uh, that are involved in the, uh, in the centronuclear myopathy community. Educate yourself as best you can so that you can advocate for yourself or your family member uh, and support your researchers by registering with uh, research. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much.